Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. I'm just sitting here I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit Hi, this is Rob with Life Radio and we're here with uh, Pauline Young, uh, an amazing artist. Uh, one of our uh, local artists who's uh, doing great works, and uh, I just, I love her work, and I wanted everybody to, to see it, know about it, and uh, I kind of got excited. It's funny, I was uh, online today, and I seen uh, that you were going to an art gallery in Fredericton and doing a big show, and right at the moment I was looking at that, you came online and said, oh, let's do our interview, and I was like, oh, this is perfect. <laughs> this couldn't have worked out better, so the particular show and you've been doing a lot of work lately i see a, a different painting coming up almost every few days and once a week at least it seems like uh yeah. so proficient i guess time just putting time into the work trying to get engulfed i guess right yes and finding reasons to paint like i'll paint for any reason like i'll paint if you know if there's a flower or my chickens or you know well any occasions Oh, I'll paint. I don't need any, I don't need a reason to paint. I have all kinds of ideas in my head. Oh, wow. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I, I mostly paint um, Micmac life and my life. I, I've had a long life. I'm only 55 years old, but I've had a long life. And um, I paint what I remember in my childhood before I went to the foster home and um you know i was in through the 60 scoop you know with um the 60 scoop and uh, uh the residential school survivors i was a victim of that and um but i i'm trying not to you know think about too many negative things right now because i have so many negative things on my plate right now oh well, it's incredible uh, and i well, we met a year ago. You were yes. in, it was for your artwork, actually. Uh, and uh, I lost my talk. And yes, that and, and we had talked about the residential schools and, and it yes. seems prevalent now with what's on the news and everything oh going my. on. And yes, uh, so it's it's on, on top of that. So so the books and the artwork and was great. And then you've you've got all kinds of things going on in your life that you're struggling through and uh, yes. facing all those adversities and, and hardships in life and uh, yeah. and putting it into your artwork I can see it in your artwork the, the yeah. love was there it's it's incredible I don't I don't want to tell your story or anything but uh, you've been doing a lot of paintings of your son yes my son. I, I'm yes I, I can't wait are they going to be in the in the gallery in the show yeah they are going to be in the show yes so I cannot wait to see those because every yeah. time I, I look at them I'm just like I have to go see these paintings I, yes. I'm going up I, I can't Thank wait so I put everything in them and I painted through a lot of tears. It, it, see, they say art is healing, and and that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to, I was trying to speed up my grief, and you cannot speed up grief just by the way. <laughs> no. Grief takes its own time, but I thought it would help me. It helped me, but it did. It did help me. I had spent time with my son, you know, in the painting, with, and um, they're going to be in the show. And That's you awesome. can, I can paint through tears. I know I realize that, <laughs> but it's, it, it was very healing. Yes. That's awesome. And it's a way of sort of uh, him continuing on too in the yes. artwork. Uh, there's, there's something special about that. I was thinking the yeah. other day, I was thinking, wow, a hundred years from now or some, somebody be looking at that painting and yeah. uh, we'll all have been gone long forgotten. And, and well, that's the point I uh, want, why I'm making art because 
I, I, I applied for a grant and, and, and I wanted to do about Mi'kmaq people in Miramichi. And so I went down to the library thinking I was going to get lots of information on Mi'kmaq, Mi'kmaq life in the Miramichi. And I didn't get any. It was just a little tiny envelope. And it was just a couple of articles in it. So I, I, I was like, oh, my goodness, there's nothing about Mi'kmaq in the Miramichi, you know, in history. I said, but then I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to. I'm gonna have to fill the internet with art and Mi'kmaq life in the Miramichi. And that oh, was I the only it. way I was gonna, my part in keeping Mi'kmaq life alive. And we weren't just, we just, we didn't just pop here up overnight. You know, we were here for a long time. And that's what I wanna show. We were here for a long time and I could feel it in my ancestors, you know, in my blood. You know, I could feel it when I do art, you know, I can feel them here, you know, and I'm going to bring them out. So wh when did you get started in art as a young kid, as a, as a little girl or what, what inspired um, you to first do your first drawings and pictures and things like that? Well, it's my father was an artist. He's an artist. He's his name is Philip Young. He's a Mi'kmaq artist from Red Bank, but he died in 55. Uh, somebody beat him up in Boston and he died from his injuries. So he was brain dead. So he died at 55. So now, well, 54, 53, 54. So I'm at that age of 55 now. So um, I'm ready to live his life now. Somebody cut his life short. It, they murdered him in Boston. Wow. So now is... I'm going to uh, finish his life. Your life, your 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 life sounds like a movie, like one of these. You know, you see Van Gogh and the tragic life of the artist, and it's a uh, yes, it's, it's incredible. It's like you're living it, a modern it is day. Tragic, but, you know, I keep going on. I find the strength. I, I'm look. My my father didn't have the internet for his you know for his art, so um, I'm living for him. I'm living for him now. I'm living for my son. That's, that, well, that's awesome. And then you can see it in the work. It's incredible. And he, we're, we're, I'm going to post up a thing, get people to, uh, I'd love for people to go out and see this artwork. I, I think it's going to be a once in a lifetime thing. Are you going to display it at all? I don't know if there really is a place in Miramichi to do a little art show of some kind where so people there, could see it. Well, there is Carrefour Boussoulet at the French school. They oh, yes. Yes. There, but we really need a gallery. Like the Miramichi Art Cork artists don't have a gallery. And um, we've been trying to get a gallery <laughs> and, and that's a big problem. That is, that is. Miramichi don't have a gallery. <laughs> we well, need one. That's going to be my new plate. I, yes. I, I've decided yeah. that's it. I've been, I've been doing things to uh, raise money for charities and do stuff. I think a gallery is a, is a great idea. And I would be there. That's I would awesome. be there. Yes. And we have so many great artists here. People don't we even so realize on a Miramichi you wouldn't believe it and if there was a gallery we would be all there oh that'd be incredible oh, I met yeah. a lady uh last year I, I didn't even know this but she did the artwork for uh all the UNICEF boxes at one time in her life oh, traveled the world oh, and oh, yes incredible. like we have all this talent here these these famous talented people here in Miramichi and know, we don't and nobody knows about it nowhere nobody to show their art no we're not loved no, <laughs> it's okay. We we need a gallery. No, one of these days, like I I, I want I want a gallery in Miramichi. I me too. I think it's awesome. I yeah. would help anybody. I would help anybody. Well, that that's gonna be a maybe we'll work on a plan for that. We'll get together yeah. and figure that one out. I think that's a great idea. I know. Now I you know. got my head turning, wheels turning. It's like <laughs> new right. cause. It's something yes. exciting. Yes. So so. Your dad was an artist and he inspired yeah. you to do art. And, uh, yeah. and, and obviously it was a tragedy what happened to your father. And, uh, yes, that's so many was, was there any particular reason he got beat up or was it because he was native or was he just in the wrong place or what was the air? He was probably in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he did have a lifestyle that put him in places that was dangerous. Okay. Like he was an alcoholic. So he was probably, you know, coming out of a bar and they robbed him. And then they beat him up and then he fell in, um, the police found him in water. Oh my. So my father died in water and my son died in water. But wow. that's okay. 
That's okay. I don't know, something about. <laughs> yeah, well, the water spirits. Sometimes the water spirits want you. The water spirits. Eh? Yeah. So that so does does that play a, a role in your art? Yes. As far as how you think about nature and God and all that, how that all works yes. in. That's yes, incredible. Yes, yes. My my elder told me one time we were driving, and she she pointed to the water and she says, "Do you see them?" I said, see what? And those, and, and I was driving, I was trying to drive. <laughs> and, and then she was pointing at the water and I said, I don't see anything. She said, you don't see them? They're all dancing and laughing. And, and she was talking about the sparkles in the water. The sparkling water was this water spirits and they were happy that day. And she wanted me to show, she wanted to show me, but I was driving. <laughs> 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 but it was, it was a nice story. And then the only way I can cope is that when my son, when my son was drowning in the cold ocean, he almost got saved, but the water spirits wanted him. There was another big wave that threw him off the boat and they, the water spirits took him. And this, this wasn't that long ago that this happened, right? No, on April 3rd. Yes. So that's uh, wow. That's, that's they, incredible. And did you, were you able to see him that day? Did you? No. No? No. So when, how long it had been since you had seen him before you lost him to the. It was a couple of years. Okay. So, oh, wow. That, that makes it a little harder even. I, I suppose. Yes. Yes. It was, a, it was, it was a well, tough because he was going to be 40 in December and I was going to, I was going to tease him because he was going to be 40, <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. Yeah. And it's uh yeah, it's a long time. It's hard. I, I can't, I've never lost a child. I, I know what it's like to lose someone, yeah. but a child, I, I don't, I can't imagine that, no. that pain. And, and I can see it in your painting, uh, that, that love. And it just, every time I, I, I sometimes I have to click them off. I want to start crying. I, I like to see the painting. I'm like, Oh my goodness, this is just incredible. So yeah. everybody's got to go see that artwork and, uh, yes. it, it's going to be something yes. special for years and years to come, I think. I'm a hoping, long, long time. I'm hoping to see, I'm hoping children and people a hundred years from now see Mi'kmaq art on the internet. And that's what I want. I That'd want to be incredible. Art, I want to fill the internet with Mi'kmaq art. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully it'll be in the big Miramichi art gallery. <laughs> and the, be huge and yes, we'll in the big Miramichi art, yes, art Wouldn't gallery. Wouldn't that be something? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, I'm, that's another thing. I'm going to start feeding the city council. I talk to them a lot. So <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of things we, uh, we can work on and uh, get yes. a group together. And a lot of people, to, I think a, a lot of Miramichi would love to have a, a real art, art gallery with our, a our real art group. gallery. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, and for nonprofit too. <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> and so the very, so your, so your dad dies and, and you, you go yeah. on to do art. What's your first, quarry into selling art or working as a as a professional artist like trying to uh you know I, I remember those first years when I tried to step out and sell some art and you know travel around what was your first quarry into trying to see if you could make a living at it well networking <laughs> having the right people notice you because I was trying to sell art and trying to make it as an artist I, and I've seen all my other art friends doing art and 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 I and I was trying to say what am I doing wrong that you know, and I couldn't understand what it was, it was social media. I had to get on social media and get past my shyness and, um, and don't be shameful, <laughs> you know, have no shame, have no <laughs> shame. Like, you know, some people are going, Oh, I don't want to sell my, you know, they're, you know, they're very humble, you know, but have no shame. Just keep on pushing yourself. That's yes and being confident yes and the uh when we first met you were doing the the artwork for the book series uh yeah. which just blew my mind i seen the art i was like wow just sort of captivated so what what inspired you to do that artwork like tell us your sort of story involving wow. <laughs> all that aspect of it oh my goodness well i was not i wasn't getting any you know gigs work gigs <laughs> And I was saying yes to everything. You know, somebody says, do me a logo, do me this, pay, 
take a photo of this. And I was just grabbing it and I was saying yes. And then I was doing a solo show. And then somebody, then somebody asked me, do you want to illustrate a book? Never illustrated a book before. <laughs> never. Oh, really? So, never. Wow. No, this is my first time illustrating a book. I said, you know, I've never illustrated a book before. Oh, yes, we know that. I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so they gave me one book. They gave me, I'm finding my talk first. They gave me Rebecca's book first. And I was working on this book, just this. But then the second artist didn't pull out of this one. I'm I lost my talk. So they asked me to do that one. And I said, yes. <laughs> then I was working on my solo show at the same time. So um, I put a lot on my plate sometimes because I'm saying yes, 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 <laughs> yes. Because I wasn't getting any work, 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 work. But now I'm getting work. So now I can be more, um, yeah, I can just slow down a little bit. Yeah. Well, that's good. So do you have a, in those books, was there a favorite picture or something that touched you when you were doing it uh, that, that you think back on and think, wow, I really enjoyed doing that piece of art or something specific? Um, on the, I lost my talk was the mm -hmm. cover. Yes. Wow. I, lost, I was very happy with the cover. So what was the thinking behind that when you were painting it? I'm always wondering uh, as an artist thoughts when you're painting a picture or how you're getting inspired or what you're uh, thinking about when you're doing it. That's I, I have, I have both those books. I love them. I, think, <laughs> I read them to my grandson. They're incredible. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, Rita Joe was like, we, it's, it's like we're two split, split personalities, right? We have our culture on one side and then we can't have our culture on the other side. So that's why I made it split, her cover split, because we don't know who we are, you know? We don't know who we are. You know, you want to cut us our hair off and wash our skin white, which they did in, when I was in a foster home. Um, I had a birthmark and I had to wa scrub my, my, my birthmark off. You know how hard, it, how hard that is? And I was just a baby. Wow. And, um, that's what I liked about the these books were hard to do as well because I was in this I was in a foster home. So even even in a in a foster home, you felt like you were it was sort of like an assimilation. You were trying to be converted oh, yeah. into something well, that you weren't. We we spent most all our, our winter in the shed, in the woodshed. We didn't spend the uh, how in the house in the winter. We stayed outside in the woodshed, and um, uh, it was a bad foster home. Um, we didn't get any toys. We never, we've been there five years. We never had any toys. We never celebrated birthdays. We got bit, we got hit with sticks. Um, I had, I had skin, I had skin condition. I never saw a doctor and, um, even, yeah, it was a horrible, horrible foster home. And it was, and, and this book was hard to do as well <laughs> to do. Yeah, because well, I, I could. Have, well, I remember it uh, emotionally was. Uh, I, I remember when we were talking about it at the library that day, and, and the emotions were, were. You could tell, and just and like all your art, I think it just had. That's what makes it great is your emotions are are engulfed in the pictures and the, and the yes. stories, and uh, but that makes a great artist. I think. I think the fact that uh, your your life experiences in these pictures and in this work, yes. is uh, I think what intrigues me about it. It's, it's, it, there's something amazing. I never, I never think about what I, what, I always say yes to it, but then I never think about how it affects me, <laughs> you know? And then I say, oh man, why did I do that? <laughs> you know, cause then I'm crying through the whole, <laughs> oh, but that's okay, but I'm healing. I'm healing. That's what I was going to say. Does it feel like a healing process? The tears and the, the, you know, the going through it that. Does. Actually it's validation. Because for so many years, I've been trying to tell people about my experience in the foster home. And, um, and I've had therapy, but that part was always skipped over. Like they didn't believe me, you know? And, and then, and then uh, and now it's validation. Now Canada is validating my experiences. And now it's like, oh, I've been pushing this, uh, pushing this story down, 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 down. But now it's out now. So now I can deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it, 
Well, yeah, there's a, there was a gentleman uh, who had, I talked to recently or through a friend and uh, he had written a book on, on the experience of going through the residential schools. And I just, yes. I, I can't even, I, I can't, I've picked it up, tried to read it a few times. I just, the emotions yeah. that I just can't imagine how human beings can treat other human beings in that way. I know. Yeah. And, it, and it's a confusing. It was thing. awful. It was money. Cause I remember the foster home when I was in the foster home, they had a new car every year, you know, I, and we, <laughs> we had, so you're no out toys. in the woodshed and they're driving no. around in brand new cars. Yeah. Yes. Figure yes. That out. Yes. Yes. Where does that? Yeah, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand. Even at that young age, I knew something was wrong. You know, I, nobody taught me nothing when I was young. I had to, I had to teach myself love and all this stuff myself, but, but I knew then that was not right. <laughs> and you would find it. I would think that it would be hard to, uh, to love because it would be like, no. you know, all, all these people, why uh, it'd be more bitterness and hatred you would feel, I would think. There is bitterness and hatred, but I let that go. But some of my siblings haven't, some of my siblings are really, really traumatized by that and won't let it go. But I've, I have to let it go. Yeah. It's yeah. understandable. I, I, I get it. It makes more sense to let it go because it's, it only hurts yourself. Right. Yes. I, I think forgiveness okay. is, is a way of healing yourself so that you can move on because in order to be the somebody like you, great doing all yeah. the stuff you're doing, uh, it's forgiveness that gives you the ability to, uh, to go to the next step and make sure this never happens to anybody else. Tell your story, spread yeah. your paintings out, get, get the word out that this happens and we, we can't let this kind of thing happen in the world. I know. Isn't it a great that, you know, stuff like that can't happen again in this lifetime. Not no. that we have too much social media now, you know, protection, you know, there's help out there for people in, in that circumstances. It's, yes. Yeah, it's getting a lot better, a lot yes, better, for sure. Definitely. And, uh, and that's, that's a good that. thing. And, and keeping it in the forefront so people understand what's happening and make sure it never happens again. And I think yeah. sometimes uh, I'll hear people sometimes say, oh, oh, what? they're talking about that again. And, and, you know, that happened a long time ago. But that yeah. isn't the point. The point is we don't ever want it to happen again. That's we want to make right. sure that the world going forward is a better place. And a, and exactly. Like there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on wrong to black people jewish people any kind of people even you know even the whites themselves you know even the word white is kind of racist you know in my word i don't know it's it's the way you say things it's the way you say things i guess yeah well it kind of comes along with a stigma now you're kind of attached to everything that's happened in the yeah. past as well as yeah so, and if we can get past that yeah yeah oh we can we are right now look at <laughs> we're doing it and uh spreading joy throughout the world so you uh so you come along you get this this offer to do this book and uh and you're going through the stories and especially that well that's an incredible story about uh the orphanage and what you went through so yeah. how did you feel about were you nervous about going into to doing an illustration in a book and how it would go or uh the time constraints, like they must have give you timelines to say, oh, I got to have this book done by this yeah. time or that well, time. Like I said, when, when I first said it, th I was only supposed to do one book. <laughs> <laughs> I was only supposed to do one book and I had my solo show. And I said, I can do both. You know, I could, I'm, I'm a workaholic as well. I'm a workaholic. I, I'm always doing, I'm always, I have to do something. But anyways, um, I was only supposed to do one and I had my time and my deadline and then the other artist dropped out and then I had to do the other book. <laughs> wow. So yeah, it was, they asked me to do two. <laughs> so, the, and, and the, in the books, the, the poem, I remember the poem. Yes. It, like explain, explain to people who, because I think everybody should get these books and it's better yes. when you told me the story, I try to, to repeat it and tell people, but when you told me it, it was like, I get it. This is, this is incredible. Like the uh, sort of how she lost her talk and wasn't who she was. So your idea and the thinking behind the poem and what it's all about. 
Yeah, she's well. Well, can you imagine this? Like, I think of Rita Joe like as Maya Angelou, right? Great and, poet. <laughs> yes, Maya Angelou, Rita Joe, right up there. And when they told me to do, I'm finding my talk. I said, Oh yeah, I can do this free easy. Then they told me to do Rita Joe's, and I said, Okay, I will. And and I was like, oh my God, I'm oh God, oh my God, I'm doing Rita Joe. I'm trying to rep I'm trying to think what Rita was thinking about. I hope I was very stressed. <laughs> I was very stressed to think about what Rita Joe meant in this certain. But when I started reading the the book, no, the her poem, it almost became easy because. I lived it, you know, I lost my talk. The talk to you took away. The talk that the foster home was gonna beat me with a stick because I said, I asked my, my brother to pass the cell away, the salt. You know, the talk you took away. You know, when I was a little girl at Shubanakini school, you know, I, I, I made it cold because I was cold in the woodshed, you know? um the angel the box the church you know all that you know we were all it's i remember all this these are actually these are coming from my memories i mean you snatched me away you know i remember when the nurses were yelling at me because i couldn't speak Mi'kmaq, and the nurses were yelling at me calling me stupid you know and that's and that's there and and I speak like you. I speak like you. Well, I remember that I speak like you. Well, I do speak like you with the Bible. You know, I, I don't I don't speak Migma. I think like you, you know, we're human. I think like you, we're I'm human. You know, we have thoughts, we're smart, we're intelligent, we're not we're not heathens, you know, we have thought, we have thought processes. I create like you, you know. We we're not we're just like you. We write, we sing, we dance. We're 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 people. We're just like you. The scrambled ballads about my words, you know. I love that. I love you know her. I'm a typewriter, you know. I can hear Rita jo, Rita Joe typing away, you know. I love her. And two ways two ways I talk, both ways I say. Two ways she talks. She talks orally. She talks oral history with her feathers, you know. But everything's in books now. And those are her books. Your way is more powerful. You know, your talk is more powerful. It's more direct. It's in your face. You know, it's it's everywhere, you know. I'm thinking that this when you when your talk is more powerful. You know, it's it's loud in your face. You know, you're not listening. So gently, I offer my hand and ask. And this is and um, Rita Rita is gentle giant, and they called her a gentle giant or gentle. They they called her a gentle warrior. Gentle warrior, yes. Someday I be hope to be like her, but I'm not gentle yet. <laughs> So it's let me find my talk, you know, let, she wants to find her talk, you know, cause they took it away from her and she wants to, she wants to tell her story, not you tell you cause she doesn't want anybody else to tell her story. She wants to tell her own story. That's yeah. awesome. And um, let me find my talk so I can teach you about me. And this is where I am in my life is what my art is about me and my family and my Mi'kmaq lifestyle, you know, in the past that that was taken from me. But I have, you know, now my son is my son is my ancestor. You know, he's now I'm going to paint about my son. You know, I, I don't have to paint about, you know, wigwams and all that you know it could be current ancestors you know you know it doesn't have to be teepees you know stuff like that it, sure you know, well that makes more sense that uh, you would be painting about how, how your life is now and and yes. what you're going through 
Yes. And uh, so in between doing the book and uh, starting your son's paintings, was there any other paintings in between that? Or, or you just were busy finishing uh, yeah. up the books? Well, no, I want to, I want to start, I want to start painting women stronger, stronger women. Oh, I meant to ask you, I, I <laughs> did you get involved at all? And uh, there's a lot of, uh, I, I'm having this conversation with people lady about, you know, the schools and all the terrible things went down, but what about the missing women now? What are we doing now? You know, about, I see the red dresses up everywhere. Yes. And, and I see little things up, but I, so did you do paintings towards that or were you involved in that no. in any way? Did that affect you at all? Well, yes. Yes. The red dress project <laughs> did affect me a lot. Um, well, it's missing and murdered Aboriginal women and girls, right? Mm -hmm. And, but, and boys. So that includes my father. Right. And boys. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought yeah, it was just there's for the women. Some, okay. no, there's some and boys. Yeah. Okay. There's missing boys as well. Yeah. Oh, wow. There's missing boys still like Brandon Mitchell. He's still missing. Yeah. And then of course, no one got nobody, you know, my father got killed, murdered, you know, he's he, unsolved. I, I don't think that will ever be solved. No, but, but I think, I think, um, with missing, murdered, and uh, murdered and missing Aboriginal women and girls, is that um, I felt it when I felt it when I was younger, when I was in twenties, and when I was in my twenties, I was drinking, I was doing bad things, and I've seen myself in the ditch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen myself in the ditch. You know, and I could have been one of them, you know, I'm just being honest, you know, I had, I had my younger days and, um, thank God I was, I didn't die, you know, um, but, um, I don't do much projects on that. I did do a stained glass, uh, I did do a stained glass panel for Mount Allison University. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. That's, yeah, that's so I, I don't do a lot of, you know, I don't do, because I, I do stained glass as well. I paint and do stained glass. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't know that. I'm going to have to have to get some more stuff up online so I can see all this stuff. Yeah, I do stained glass. But oh, somebody asked awesome. me if I do stained glass, little tiny red dresses, and I won't do that. <laughs> I can't do that, and I won't. Okay. Yeah. So that, uh, so then... So your son goes, how, your son died in a, a, he was a fisherman, right? He was a crab fisherman. Yes. Yeah. And, and so he, like a lot of fishermen, he went out to the water and, and didn't come back one day. Yes. So, so you find out the news and you go through that initial tragedy of, you yes. know, losing a, a loved one, which I still to this day can't grasp how people like it. I guess you never get over it. It's just something that's with you forever. And, yeah. uh, and you got to sort of go back on, the time you had before that and all those memories and moments and, and playing through your mind. And that's why, that's why I keep telling people it's so important. You never know. We're all in a line. We're all going. Yes. And we I don't know. know where we are in the line. So I know. Be good uh, people so. don't realize that you we're all in a line. You're yeah. right. And we're going to go and I'm going to make the best of this world right now. Yeah. Every day. Cause it might be my last day. So does all the other stuff really matter The You know, it's uh, what are you doing today? <laughs> And yes. what moment did you have? What memory? And I, yeah. and I always say when you get older, you know, many years from now and you look back on your life and you could change every day from that day to this, what are the moments that you would say, I wish I had done this or that do them now, start working on those things now and yeah. uh, enjoy every minute of every day in life. I think we, there's That's just not enough that. time. There's, there's not enough time. No, no, yeah. I'll be gone tomorrow. The next day I could be gone tonight. You know, but I'm going to try my best to get the art out there so young people 200 years from now can see Mi'kmaq art. Because right now, when I was looking for Mi'kmaq art in, the, in Miramichi, there was none. <laughs> You're right. And there has to be more. We've got to, we got to do more. something about that. Well, I'm doing something. Yes. So, so the first the first painting you did of your son, what was the idea behind that? That got it I was started. to push him out of the water. You wanted to pull I, him out of the water? Yeah. Okay. I was... I had many dreams 
I was floating in the ocean. Many bad, every time I was under stress, I would have a dream. I was being in the middle of the ocean, just by myself in the dark middle of the ocean, just waving, going away. And then a whale would go by. So then I stopped having these dreams. I stopped having them. But then um, my son died. Then I got it back. So I thought I just, um, I'll paint myself in the water, in my dream, and then I'll be pushing Seth out of the water with his canoe. That's what I was thinking. And then the captain, the captain is still missing. So I was hoping the water spirits would at least push him out of the water but the captain is still the captain's still missing you're still missing now they haven't found yeah, him yet jump, the Goodbye. jumbo's still missing yes they're still okay. searching too they're still they're still searching yes for the captain wow yeah. that's incredible so and then you moved on so how many paintings did you do in the whole series so far just two just well she only gave me a month <laughs> yeah but well, i for some reason, I thought there was, I thought I had seen a few, a couple other ones that maybe they weren't part of that series, but they, uh, they look like they belonged or something. I don't know. For some reason. And uh, so the second painting, what inspired you on that? It was, I had to let him go. I had, to, I had a, I had an altar in my living room. <laughs> I had an altar of my son in my living room and I was not not going to take it down. You know, I was going to keep it there for the rest of my life. His hair, his clothes, his boots, everything was there, his pictures. And then one day I took it down. I had to take it down because I was dying. and I was dying inside. So I had to take the altar down just but only for a few pieces. And that's when I said, I got to let you go. So that's where I... I told my son, you can go now. And I whispered in his ear when I saw him in his casket that, you know, you know, you're going to a different world and you're going on an adventure. Because um, when Seth, when he was little, he, him and I would, we would play Rambo, <laughs> him and I. You know, we would play with Rambo in the woods in the tall grass. You know, he'd have his bandana on and I would have mine. And um, it's just that my little Rambo on, is on his last adventure. That's that's awesome. And the, uh, wow. I'm hot. I'm, I can't talk because I don't I want to cry. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> but I think uh, what you're doing, I, you know, your son is in your heart anyway. Those Those were just things the altar stuff or whatever, but, uh, he's, you know, he's gone, but he's with you forever because I keep saying to people, the experiences we have with each other yes. are there forever. We have, I have those till the day I die and you have those till the day you die. So yeah. cultivate those and, and enjoy that. And, and though that he's still there with you, you know, in your thoughts and your heart and your mind. And someday yeah. I, how it all works in the end, we'll all be together again. But, uh, yeah. for now we have the time we spent together and we, we can, we can work on that and think about that. And, uh, and you know, it can bring smiles to our faces if we uh, think about it in yeah. those ways, right? He's on an adventure. That's what I'm thinking. I think yeah. so, too. Why not? On it, another adventure. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely more than what we know. <laughs> yes. There's, defi- there's <laughs> definitely more. We have to believe that. Yes. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. without it, what else is there, right? I Some people say, well, why do you believe in God to me all the time? And I say, well, if if, if, if I don't, what's the alternative? There's nothing, you know? Yeah. So which, which do you choose? I choose in a better world, a better life yes. and, and uh, hopefully getting to meet all the people that have moved on in my life at the end. So that's, that's, I think is a better way to think about life. Yes. And our cats. <laughs> our animals. <laughs> so you're a big animal lover. Do you have cats and dogs? Yes, I have chickens. Chickens. I have- <laughs> I have two dogs and chickens. I got two more chickens coming next week. <laughs> <laughs> My wife wanted chickens. I'm like, no, <laughs> the cats are enough. The dogs are enough. Chickens now. 
<laughs> they, are, they are adorable and they are so smart and they they tell you any stranger in the yard because they'll scream stranger danger they don't like any strangers <laughs> that's true that's true sort of an alert system and uh, and they yeah. and they they show you how to love don't they oh yeah <laughs> just uh, uh, yeah. it's unconditional with them no matter what you do i mean somebody can be a mean person bad oh. to their animals they still love them oh i know the it's animals incredible unconditional love if we all loved like animals oh my gosh yeah, yeah. they definitely oh. could teach us a few things <laughs> we had yeah. uh my wife and i had horses for years uh yeah. she was a horseback rider and loved horses and just uh and and just spending time in the barn with them and, the, and that feeling that you know i i don't know there was just something about it that made my day every day yeah yes i'm yeah. not much of a chicken guy though horse guy yeah <laughs> chicken guy now i was kind of like no, no leave me out of the chicken the chicken stuff <laughs> well, when i was a kid i used to have to cut the chicken's heads off and, oh, oh. Or, and i was like it, it, it gave me a traumatic experience i was like no oh i don't want nothing to do with the chickens <laughs> no i i feed five families with my eggs Oh, that's incredible. Five families. Yes. That's incredible. I don't charge. I just give away five, five families I give eggs to. That's, so for free. Yeah. So you're changing the world. Yes. That's right. That's a, yes. the motto of my show every day. Change the world. Do something. Yes. I was reading today. Uh, 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 I can't remember who the poet was. They were saying that uh, we all can say, oh, we can't do much to change the world. But if, you know, individually, there's billions of people in the world. Imagine tomorrow we all went out and decided to do one good thing. That cool. would be a billion things. Tell me that wouldn't change the world in a minute. It would right? change the world in a second. Yeah. So to, to <laughs> say we can't change the world, we can change the world every day. You yeah. change the world with who you talk to at the coffee shop, with who yeah. you're talking to online. Everything you do, you can change the world in a little way by lighting yeah. up somebody's day. That's wonderful. I like that. Yes. And, uh, and, Art inspires people, you know, yeah. motivates people. And, uh, yeah. and especially when it's got incredible stories behind it. It's, yeah. uh, I can't wait to see it, actually. I'm looking forward to uh, going up and oh, seeing too. your art. And me I, too. This, this is very exciting because I, I don't get out very much. And for me to go to see other people's art is very exciting. Very incredible. exciting. Yes. I'm working on, uh, I decided, I hadn't painted, I painted my whole life. And then oh, uh, a, a few years ago, yeah, this is one of my, paintings behind me here i was gonna ask that's a lovely painting of horses but i stopped for a bit and then i decided uh last year i said i because i commercially i hated it having oh. to paint every day for everybody and you know I, I i painted so many lighthouses i never wanted to paint a lighthouse and <laughs> everybody yeah, wanted yeah. a lighthouse a lighthouse so i stopped yeah. for about 10 years but i i wanted to help out you know yeah. uh, with money and and do more so i started yeah, a yeah, 10 yeah. painting series and uh, yeah. I put a little story behind it. So I did my first one about a month ago and I posted it up online with a little video behind it and story. And oh. I, I said it by Christmas time, I'm hoping I put this in my head that I'm going to have 10 done and then do a show and give all the money to help something. Maybe it'll go towards our gallery or towards oh. something, but oh. I, I, it was a way to get inspired to do art for, for the love of art again, rather than the, the commercial side of it. Cause like at yeah. this point in my life, I'm, I'm, I'm just looking to do art for the pure joy of doing it yes yeah but when i see art like yours i'm I'm just like wow it's so that's that's real art to me i love it Thank it's you. incredible but then you know i i didn't always right now i'm fortunate to make art to pay my bills with the art that i make i mean i'm not rich yeah oh it's a struggling business for sure <laughs> <laughs> but i'm paying my bills you know I'm, my, my animals are fed but uh, yeah, before, you know, I was taking two jobs. Like I would, I would be a taxi driver and then I would paint that night. You know, I worked in a, I worked a child and family and then I would work at paint that night. But I, I was getting stressed out doing two jobs. You know, then I went to school for human services so I can help people. I was help, I was, I was, I went to school to get human services so I can help people. And then I got the job and then I was helping people go follow their dreams. That's incredible. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Like I got a job to tell somebody to go follow their dreams. And I wasn't doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I said, but but every day I was trying to tell these women to follow their dreams, and here I am, like not following your dreams. <laughs> yes, yes, that's incredible. It's like okay. you know somebody was doing arts and crafts and knitting and and all these things, and I said, follow your dreams. You got potential. Look it up. And I wasn't doing that to myself. Yes. Wow. So I said, then I made the decision. I said, I got to do it. The first year I was kind of, the first year I was kind of, you know, really broke. And, you know, I, I used my credit card for art supplies, (laughs) (laughs) but I, but I, but I got myself out, you know, once I started getting, getting um, money, I would reinvest it into um, my bills. I would reinvest it into uh, art supplies, you know. Anything I make now is always into art supplies. Yes. That's something, isn't it? And then <laughs> I love this. I love this job. I love my job. I can't do anything else. I can't. That's... I can't do anything else. Well, I'm glad you're not. I'm. I, I'm glad you picked this path and doing it because uh, the artwork is incredible. People are going to be uh, amazed, and someday we're going to have it in the gallery here where we can all see it. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> yeah you're definitely gonna have to do a show here somewhere if it's just care for a bro soleil or wherever but people need to to see yeah, your they art. do have a show all the time and i do i did had two shows up there yeah awesome awesome yeah. well yeah. i can't wait well, yeah for, yeah that's that's gonna be incredible so how how long is this show in fredericton how long is the it's, is that for a couple of days a week or it's still july 10th i I had the paper. I was going to read it to you. Oh, what do you have here? It's, it is June 18th at 5.30. Uh, you're welcome to join us across the street in the green. So, you know, it's on um, on Queen Street. But there's a green, green little patch of grass right across the street. So we're going to be there. And uh, we are going to have the ceremony, uh, introductory ceremony hosted by Chief Alan Chicky Polches and the Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick, Honorable Brenda Murphy. Wow. That's and the incredible. mayor. That's going to be something. Mayor. Yeah. And then, uh, so are you able to see the art that night or not till the next yes. day? Or? Oh, after, you are. Okay. After- after, after the little talk, talk, talk ceremony, you go across the street and look at the art. Oh, wow. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and, and get down uh, for that tomorrow. It, yeah, it's at 530. It's going to be picked okay. by, like the chief and lieutenant governor and the mayor is going to be on and and and. and uh, um, publicity, what do you call those? Reporters? <laughs> reporters. 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 Reporters are going to be there. Okay. Yes. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> you never, yes. never get enough publicity. That's for sure. Never get enough publicity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that's at uh, 406 Queen Street in Fredericton. I was just looking up the address here. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that's incredible. And and yeah, they're going to have. Um, Artists, Audrey Arsenal, Katie Augustine, Kenlyn Barlow, Braylon Sear, Brian Francis, Franny Francis, Tara Francis, Charlie Gaffney, Tim Hogan, Chantel Polches, Justin Sapir, Alan Silliboy, Gary Santapas, and Pauline Young. Awesome. And well, secondary well. work collections of Ned Bear and Roger Simon. Well, they, I'm, them two are really I'm looking good. forward to that. And I, I, yeah. I got it in my my mind now. I'm going. Okay. <laughs> see, it. see you tomorrow. So, so I'll actually get to see you there tomorrow. That'll be incredible. Yes. Uh, and uh, yeah, my daughter lives in Fredericton too, and I can go visit her and surprise her. Maybe I'll she'll come with me and uh, go see the okay. art. So that would be nice. Five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. Yeah. And don't tell my boss. I'm skipping out of work early. <laughs> <laughs> just we just got it all online so everybody can hear it, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell him it's part of work. That, that yeah, sounds like a good plan. Related. Another <laughs> yeah, it's interview. all work related. Reporter. You got to be a reporter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, Pauline, I, I want to thank you for uh, for talking with me. And uh, and I can't wait to see your art tomorrow. And uh, your story is incredible. And, and keep the artwork going. And uh, as I say, we're going to keep in contact because we're going to get okay. this whole gallery thing figured out. 
Yes. Uh, Mayor Machine needs a gallery. I'm going to be Mayor talking Machine to the mayor this week and uh, a few of the yes. counselors and uh, see what see what they say about this kind of stuff and where we what we would have to do to get something like that going. Yes. Yes. That would be incredible. Yes. Well, I look forward to it. And uh, from everybody, we want to say thank you. Thank you. And you have a you have a great show, and I'm sure you'll be successful because uh, you deserve thank you it. So much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Polly. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time